one of those days where you just knew it wasn't good. Something about it just kind of put me on edge. It looks like that thing is right on top of Greensburg. Your time is up. You need to be in your shelter right now. Everything started falling on top of us. As I was turning around, the roof started ripping up. I literally got blown off the road into the ditch. I took everything that I know as far as survival skills and I threw them out the window. The last thing I told him was, I don't want to die. And then I lost him. Somebody said, take him to the hospital. We didn't realize there was no hospital. From the Weather Channel, this is Storm Stories with meteorologist Jim Cantori. Springtime. In rural Kansas, it marks the start of planting season and tornado season. We know that there'll be a certain number of tornadoes every spring. Usually they're not too severe. Just have to keep an eye on them, make sure you're not in the path. The small town of Greensburg, population 1500, sits two hours west of Wichita at the heart of what meteorologists call Tornado Alley. This alley, a corridor stretching from South Dakota down to Texas, sees more tornadoes than anywhere else in the world. And in 2007, Greensburg will suffer its worst one yet. Greensburg resident Dennis McKinney is used to dealing with Mother Nature. The state representative grew up working his parents' farm 17 miles away, land he still farms today. It can be a lengthy commute to the state capital in Topeka, but he and his family love calling Greensburg home. Communities like Greensburg are just wonderful places to raise children, great places to live, to retire, people look out after each other. You just know everybody and everybody knows you and small town life. Their neighbors are looking forward to raising a family in Greensburg too. Chris Koss and Kelsey Schroth moved in next door to the McKinney's after buying their dream home, which they share with their nine month old son, Jaden and dog Chopper. The house was just amazing. <laughs> it was a dream home. I mean, anything that you'd ever want out of life. You know, we had a beautiful home. After I had Jaden, Dennis would see us outside. He'd come over and talk to us. We were watching him grow up, of course, and you know, he was growing pretty fast. May 4th, 2007. Around 3 p.m., Chris pulls into his driveway. He and his dog, Chopper, are headed 30 miles north to Kinsley, Kansas, on business. But the day is unseasonably warm, over 85 degrees, and Chris is thirsty. We stopped off to get something to drink. I didn't know that was gonna be the last time I was gonna see the house or the town for that fact. On the way out of Greensburg, he notices several trucks stopped along the road. We noticed storm spotters sitting on 183 and 54 highway. My brother had actually made the comment, you know, there must be gonna be something going on. There is. A halting mass of low pressure approaching the Great Plains has begun to tap warm, moist air flowing north across Texas and Oklahoma. A supercell forms over Harper County, Oklahoma, and begins moving north and east into Kansas. But as afternoon turns to evening, Kelsey Schroth isn't paying much attention to the weather. With Chris 30 miles away in Kinsley, she is taking care of their nine-month-old son, Jaden, solo. And tonight, that task is particularly difficult. Nothing was making him happy, so I gave him a bath. At this time, my mom was calling she was watching the weather and told me to just get ready in case the weather gets bad. Well, we live in Kansas, so, you know, weather's bad all the time, and you don't really think much of it, you know? So I wasn't too worried about it. But her next door neighbor, Dennis McKinney, is. It was one of those days where you just knew it wasn't good. The weather was unsettled, it was windy. You could tell the barometric pressure was low because you know, you'd hear the drains gurgling. I remember it being really hot and just humid and just not very nice weather. Something about it just kind of put me on edge. Back at the McKinney house, Lindy is cooking. Her mom, Jean, is out of town, leaving the eighth grader in charge of dinner for dad, Dennis. I remember I was making eggs because they're easy and I could make them. I remember it started hailing pretty bad. Already the storm has spawned funnel clouds. As it approaches Greensburg, Doppler radar measures winds rushing around its center at 100 miles per hour. Turned on the TV because we wanted to watch the radar. We wanted to check, see what kind of storms were and where they were at. And I was eating supper and the sirens went up. The sirens can only mean one thing. A tornado has been spotted. Lindy jumps up from the table. 
And that's when I started, you know, moving around. I put my shoes on. I just get downstairs, and I just kind of stayed down there, turned on the TV down there. Well, Lindy said, Dad, get your boots on and get downstairs. It was still, at that point, moving southwest to northeast. I called some friends of mine that were storm spotters. I said, what's it doing? They said, it's moving northeast. So at that point, I thought it might get, it looks like it will miss us. But the tornado makes a sudden, unusual swerve toward Greensburg. And what had looked like a narrow miss now looks like a direct hit. One of the weathermen for one of the local affiliates came on, who's always normally very controlled, very matter of fact. He said, this is bad, this is very, very bad. This is the worst possible signature this can have on radar. You've got to take this seriously, and you've got to take cover. Well, I sure hate to tell you this, friends, but it looks like that thing is right on top of Greensburg. Your time is up. You need to be in your shelter right now. And that's when it really got my attention. That's when I started to feel a little surge of adrenaline then. Chris Koss is 30 miles from Greensburg in Kinsley, Kansas on business when he starts fielding anxious phone calls from Kelsey. Initially, I was telling him, come home. There's a storm coming, and I don't like to be alone during storms. And when I realized how bad the storm was and how bad it was going to be, I was telling him to stay where he was. Don't come home. Chris used to be a long haul truck driver. He knows how dangerous the roads will be in this weather. But the thought of Kelsey and Jaden facing a tornado without him is just too much to stomach. And he decides to attempt the trip back to Greensburg anyway. I jumped in the car. I took everything that I know as far as survival skills and I threw them out the window. People were actually parked on the side of the road with the hazards on. That was actually the only reason I could tell the road was straight. I couldn't really tell it was hailing, raining. The windshield wipers weren't keeping up. Every worst case imaginable, worst driving conditions that you could ever have. From the cab of his truck, Chris is still able to reach Kelsey sporadically via cell phone. But Kelsey is growing more panicked. She needs to hunker down with Jaden before the storm hits. But their home has no basement. They tell you to go to a bathtub and put, you know, pillows or blankets or whatever over you. So I set some towels down in there and sat down and in there with him. Something, it just didn't feel right. So we got out and I decided to go to the master bedroom into our big walk-in closet. By now, the tornado is just minutes away from Kelsey's house. 200 mile an hour winds have sliced through Greensburg's transmission lines cutting power and silencing the tornado siren's blare. Racing down Highway 183, Chris makes a frantic call to his next door neighbor, Dennis McKinney. The phone rang, still had a landline. It was Chris and he said, I'm gonna send Kelsey and the baby over because they don't have a basement. And I said, they're coming over? He says, sure, send her over, it's getting bad. I remember my dad sounded pretty frantic. He just said, hurry, tell her to hurry. Tell her to come to the back door. I went out the back door. Well, I stepped on the deck and I shined my flashlight over there. Nobody came, and nobody came. I was going between talking to Chris and talking to my mom. My mom was telling me to stay there, and Chris was telling me to go over to the neighbors. Kelsey is confronted with an agonizing decision. Brave the elements to get to underground shelter next door, or weather the storm inside the house above ground. Dennis thought we were coming over. So I try to open our glass sliding door. It just wanted to budge. The suction from the wind, I could not open the door. So by that time, I knew something was terribly wrong, and it was too late for me to go anywhere. Dennis McKinney still thinks Kelsey and Jaden are coming over and worries when they fail to show up. I was getting kind of scared, and stuff started blowing around the deck, and nobody came. And I was holding the door shut, and then I heard the glass blow out of the south side of the house. Dennis is struggling against 60 mile an hour winds, a losing proposition. I picked up Jaden, and with one arm, I was holding him, and the other, I pulled the mattress off the bed and went in the closet and propped the mattress outside the door. It sounded like baseballs coming through my window from the hill. And then the next thing I know, everything was dark, and I hear the walls starting to crack behind me. I turned around and started running down the basement steps that were immediately behind me. And as I was turning around, the roof started ripping up. And I was partway down the steps when the ceiling came down. All I could think of was I'm not stopping now. I just kind of remember him running by me, grabbing me. 
we could hear it upstairs. And so he you know, said, get in the bathtub. And I was concerned about Kelsey and the baby. And I just started praying. Chris Koss is just a few miles north of Greensburg. In a desperate attempt to get to his family, he is driving into, not away from, the storm. From behind the wheel, Chris reaches Kelsey's cell phone one more time, but the wind overwhelms the truck, knocking his phone onto the floorboard. The telephone poles started breaking. Trees actually land in front of the highway in front of me. I get blown off the road. I can remember the last thing I told him before I lost all service at all was, I don't want to die. And then I lost him. May 4th, 2007. It's just before 10 p.m. and an EF5 tornado, the most severe kind, is bearing down on Greensburg, Kansas. Inside a first floor closet, Kelsey Schroth clutches her nine-month-old son, Jaden, trying to shield him from the ear-popping intensity. All I could concentrate was just holding on to Jaden. You could actually feel yourself moving. You know, you're sitting still, but you know, something's moving you and everything started falling on top of us. All I remember hearing is me screaming and Jaden screaming. A few minutes earlier, Kelsey had tried in vain to leave her house and run across the yard to her neighbors, the McKinney's. But the wind and air pressure put such forces on the door that she couldn't get it open, and she and Jaden were forced to stay put. Next door, Dennis and Lindy McKinney brace themselves in the basement bathroom. He's terrified Kelsey and Jaden are stranded outside. Got in the bathtub, and of course I was frantic because I felt like I had failed. You know, I felt like, you know, I'd left them out there in that storm. And my dad, I remember the urgency in his voice when he said, you know, I, I waited as long as I could. I couldn't wait any longer. She put her hand on my arm and said, well, let's start praying for him right now. The funnel has morphed into a massive wedge veiled by rain, hail, and darkness. Eyewitnesses say not even lightning allows them a glimpse of the entire tornado at once. It's simply too wide. And its force has just muscled Chris Goss's truck off the road. I literally got blown off the road into the ditch. Remember the side of the tires hitting the rig, and I just, I never let off the gas. I never let off the gas. Down the ditch I went. Chris draws on his old skills as a long haul trucker to drive with the 60 mile an hour winds. He angles across a field and climbs back up onto a neighboring road, never losing speed. Chopper is on the floorboard. He doesn't know what's going on. And by some miracle, you know, we, we stayed on our tires and we just kept going. The twister plows through Greensburg with the force of a high speed train. At nearly two miles across, the tornado is nearly as wide as the town itself. And Chris and Kelsey's house and the McKinney's sit in its direct path. It just seemed like it would never end. And it finally kind of quieted down. And our first thoughts were, you know, we have to see if Kelsey and the baby are okay, see if Jaden's okay. We went to the base of the stairs and there's a lot of debris that had fallen down the stairway. And so my dad went ahead of me and kind of helped pick a pathway. I remember seeing a lightning flash, and I hadn't left what used to be my house yet. And I just kind of put my hood up, and I just followed behind my dad. I remember having to jump down where the glass windows used to be, and I thought, this is not good. The tornado has mown over the house. Only the basement remains partially intact. When Lindy and Dennis ascend the basement stairs, they emerge directly into the elements. It's interesting to look up the stairway from the basement and there's no wall or door there anymore and you're, you're seeing the rain blow by and debris blow by. It's an interesting sight, an unexpected sight. Sadly, the destruction has not stopped at the McKinney's doorstep. In just 10 minutes, the storm has leveled all but two buildings in this 125-year-old town. 
30 yards away, an anxious Kelsey Schroth lays buried under the rubble, gripping her nine-month-old son. Baby Jaden has gone silent, but the tomb-like space is too dark to see his injuries. After it had passed, I was actually on my side with him in my right arm and me holding the house off of him with my left arm. I didn't realize what was going on or what was on top of us and all that kept running through my mind is, how are we gonna get out of here? Does anybody know I'm here? And I tried to start pushing, not knowing how much was there or what I was actually holding up. We went over to their house, where their house had been. It was a nice brick home and it was all gone, just gone. And I thought they were dead. And we went over, there was a pile of rubble about three or four feet high towards the north side of their house. I just couldn't imagine anybody was left. And I called out and this voice came from in the rubble and said, please get us out of here, I have my baby here. I started hollering for them. And then they found where we were. And so we started digging, Lindy held the lights. I could hear things moving above us and I seen a hand come down and touch Jaden's leg. And we pulled some things off, and pretty soon there's a little pair of legs sticking out. There's nothing left of the house but this pile. And they pull a baby out from under this pile. And they handed him to me, and he was cold. There's something red running down his back. That's what caught my eye, and I thought he was bleeding. But they don't have time to check where the blood is coming from. Jaden's mom, Kelsey, is still trapped in the rubble. And then we did some more digging, got his mom out, and she was bruised up, but not a cut, not, no bleeding, nothing. First thing I asked was, is, is Jaden okay? Somebody said, take him to the hospital to make sure they're okay. We didn't realize that there was no hospital. F5 tornado has just burrowed through 28 miles of southern Kansas. It's 200 mile an hour winds, taking most of the town of Greensburg with it. In its wake, the residents begin emerging into the night to begin searching for family and neighbors. Among them are Dennis and Lindy McKinney, who have pulled their next door neighbor, Kelsey Schroth, and her nine month old son, Jaden, from the ruins of a walk-in closet. Somebody said that they had to pull the bathtub off of us. Dennis is relieved to find mother and son alive, but at first, he thinks Jaden might be seriously injured. There was something red running down his back. That's what caught my eye, and I thought he was bleeding. But on second glance, Dennis learns it's not blood. We looked him over and we realized he had been doused with automatic transmission fluid, red automatic transmission fluid. My car flew from the garage over me and Jaden and landed in the field behind our house. So that's how close it came. The temperature has fallen off quickly in the wake of the storm. Before going off in search of others who need help, the McKinney's help Kelsey and Jaden to a friend's vehicle out of the cold. I can remember not having enough energy to carry Jaden. Um, they had to carry Jaden for me. My arms felt like jello, and now I was worried about Chris because he was just on the highway. Meanwhile, Chris is frantically driving home to see if Jaden and Kelsey have survived the tornado. I was running over telephone poles, all the electric lines, and the only thing I could think of is, you know, please let them be all right. Chris gets within a block of their driveway when the street becomes impassable. He pulls over, hops out, and sprints the rest of the way home. His dog Chopper in tow, Kelsey spies him from the truck. I didn't know if I was Chopper, if I was just, you know, seeing things. I could have swore that was my dog. And as we were running, getting closer, I heard Kelsey scream. She screamed for Chopper. Then I seen Chris right behind him, and um, another big relief came over me. You know, we sat there and held each other for a little bit. They were okay, not even injured. Kelsey was strong. She held on to him, didn't let him go. Chris, Kelsey, and the McKinney's are overjoyed their families aren't hurt, but they have lost almost everything in the tornado. As day breaks and Greensburg's 1,500 residents can actually see the staggering extent of the damage, both families discover their losses are sadly all too common.
is something you never envisioned before. Uh, to the level of destruction, the whole town smelled like a lumber yard, kind of, but you could smell all that wood that had been ripped apart. May 5, 2007. Greensburg, Kansas is reeling from an EF5 tornado. The storm has demolished 95% of the town's buildings and taken 10 lives. Crumbled homes, crushed vehicles, the pattern of destruction seems bewildering. I found my purse. It was open, but I still had some money in it. The smaller things were left, the biggest things were gone. So I still don't understand. In the following days, a veritable army descends on Greensburg to assist the cleanup. It will take a long time for Greensburg to heal and rebuild, but residents have proven a town's spirit survives, even after its buildings have fallen. The home is more than the house, and the community is more than a set of buildings. For the Weather Channel, I'm meteorologist Jim Cantori. Your local forecast is next.